Spade back here with you High Noon Leatherworks for another leather adventure and today we're going to start a new project and we're going to do some bullet loops. So these are the kind, I'm not going to put them directly on to a uh, gun belt but you can apply these to a gun belt if you'd like and uh, I'm going to do these separate so they're a standalone bullet loop and then you can put them on uh, your regular belt that you wear on your pants and then you can carry around some extra bullets uh, if you're out shooting, target shooting or uh, if you're at the range uh, doing some active shooting so come in handy to carry a few extra rounds so that's what we're going to be doing today so come on in and let's get started all right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I've, I've got two pieces. Um, so I'm going to do two different ones. Um, I've got, this is for my backing, uh, and then this is going to be for the actual loops. Now this is um, probably, I'm going to say, about three ounce leather. And this is probably about seven ounce leather so it gives you an idea of the difference I don't know if you can see it side by side if I show you the edge but kind of give you a little idea maybe so I've got I'm going to do two different ones I'm going to do one set for uh, uh 38 special and it'll hold 38 specials or 357 magnums either one then I'm going to do another set for twelve gauge shotgun rounds so you can customize these to how many rounds uh, you want to carry maybe you do uh, active western shooting or cowboy shooting or uh, just target shooting and you like on cowboy shooting normally we'll do uh, five rounds in your pistol if you're shooting two pistols then you got five rounds and five rounds so that's ten so probably do five on each one and do a couple of them so you could wear one on each uh, side of your belt and then you'd have your ten rounds per stage um, shotgun uh, could be two could be three could be four normally if you're shooting shotgun so uh, depending on what you'd, you'd want there will depend on the size of the leather that you're going to use because if you, the more you want, obviously the more or the longer your piece of leather has to be to accommodate that. So we're going to start out, these are going to end up being about the same size uh, or length. And what I want to do is just start by squaring this up and I'm going to use my grid on my self-healing mat here. And I'm going to square this piece up. And I'm not that concerned about the specific length of it yet so I'll turn it now I've got a squared edge and the length is squared on this side so this is square so the first thing I'm going to do is line that up on my grid and then I'm going to square off the other end Now 
and this one ends up being 6 inches and I can rotate it again square it up on my grid and it's not quite going to be 3 inches if I square it up looks like it'll be right at two and a half inches so by the time I get that square all the way around get the whole piece square it ends up being two and a half inches tall by six inches wide then what I want to do is I'm going to take a piece, some type of uh, this is a tape center ring that come out of a like a core out of a ring of tape or roll of tape, and I'm just going to take that and I'm going to use that as my radius because I'm going to put a radius on this. I'm going to mark that on both ends. And I'm using black leather and I've got a black ballpoint pen here. And then I'm going to take my knife and go ahead and cut around that. And I'm going to make the belt slots. for a one and a half inch belt and that's kind of going to determine your belt size will determine how big this leather needs to be so if you're going to put this on a two inch belt obviously, obviously it's going to have to be the slots are going to have to be at least two inches. So you may want to make this, the height of this, three inches. I'm just using some scrap I've got laying around. So I'm going to take my piece of leather that I just cut out. I'm going to put it on my grid again. And I'm going to put my slot right at three quarters of an inch. In from the end of the piece of leather. So I'm going to come in three quarters of an inch on both ends and make me a mark So I know where I'm going to put my slot. And I'm going to make, again, I'm going to make that slot an inch and a half. And if you remember right, my piece of leather was two and a half inches tall. So I'll come in a half an inch off of each side, off of the top. And off of the bottom, 
make me another mark and that's going to be my one and a half inch line. Now how I'm going to do that there's a couple of ways. If you had you could use a slot cutter. Um, I'm going to use a punch, a round punch, and I'm going to punch at the beginning and then at the end or the bottom right on my line. And that will give me my rounded ends of my slots. And then I'll just take my knife and my straight edge and cut straight down on each side of those holes. And be careful not to go too far. You don't want to cut into your hole itself. So there's one slot for my belt, and then I can move to the other side, or the other end. through all the way down so and then there's that slot so there's my two slots and that's for my belt to go through and I normally keep a little piece of leather that I there it is that I use as my belt to try it. So there's my inch and a half belt that would go through there. So that's what it would look like at this point. And move that out of the way. Get my scrap moved. Now as far as sizing depends on obviously the size of the bullet that you're going to use. So I will take my bullet, I have to leave some space for uh, my rivets because that's how I'm going to lock these in on each end is by a rivet. One on this end and one on this end, that will lock my loops in. I am going to start from center of those two marks. So I came in a half inch from each side. I'm going to measure that and that ends up being three and three eighths. So I'm going to mark my center of three and three eighths. There's my center 
of this space and then I will go from center remember I needed 3 8 of an inch for the width of a 38 special or 357 so I'll get to my center and I'll go out 3 16 from each side that'll give me my 3 8 of an inch then I can mark my quarter inch space so I'm going to go ahead take my slot punch and do my first hole so I don't get confused here I'm going to basically do these centered up and down. So once I get my first slots cut in there. I want to put my bullet back up there and double check that and make sure that that's going to be good. And you can see by me holding that up there that I have if I can see, it's hard to see backwards here in the camera. But I've got just that bullet sits right in the center of those two slots. So what I can do next is I can double check that by taking my thinner leather that I'm going to use for my actual loops and I'm going to cut half inch strips out of that. That's what's going to go through those slots and actually create the loops for the bullets. So I'm going to square that and then cut half inch strips. And I'm always going to use half inch strips because my slot punch that I have is a half inch. So I can go ahead while I'm doing that if I'm going to make, if that's the only thing I'm going to make out of this piece of leather, I can go ahead and cut multiples of that. And then I'll have those set aside. So there's four of them. I can set this piece aside, take one of my half inch straps, and let's just see, we'll test fit that to make sure that that's going to work for us before we go ahead and cut the rest of our slots. So I can go ahead and put that through that slot and then pull that tight and let's see if that's going to hold and holds our bullet perfect. So it holds it real nice and snug. So we can go ahead, pull this out. 
make the rest of our marks. Remember we were going to go from the center of that slot or where our mark was out a quarter inch make another slot and then we were going to go three-eighths so now we're moving out from center which makes a lot more sense and then when we get to the edges whatever's left is left so let's go ahead and take this slot punch I'm going right on my line so both my marks I know that's going to work so I'm going to go from that center mark again or that slot of that center out one quarter then from that mark go three eighths again and then I can go ahead and punch those so I'll just keep moving down And what that does is that gives me, from center, that gives me one, two, three. From center out to the left. Then I can do my, from the center mark again, of that slot, go out a quarter inch. And then from that quarter inch, go three eighths. There's my next two slots going the other direction. So I'll go ahead and put those in. And you can see I do kind of lean my punch back and forth make sure I get the top and the bottom really good then I'll mark this from the center of that slot out a quarter inch again and then go three eighths punch that one out And then I have all of my, I've got one, two, three, four, five. So that's going to be my five loops. And I can go ahead and test fit the entire five rounds. So I'll pull five rounds out of what I'm going to test fit here. Start on one end, feed that through until I have this on the back. So I have this much left coming over, not quite touching my belt loop, but that's going to give me plenty to put. my rivet in, come back, pull that over the first bullet, come up through that quarter inch hole or slot, the one that I put at a quarter inch from that, and do the same thing. Put another bullet in, I'm going to pull it snug, pull that through, 
pull it snug. Now I still got a hold of this little flap here. I'm not letting go of that. Put another bullet in. Put it through the next slot. Pull it tight. Up through the next one that was measured at a quarter inch. Put the next bullet in. So you're just going to keep repeating that until I get this completely laced through there or threaded through. Come up through the next one that measured a quarter inch and then the next one each bullet was three-eighths of an inch apart. And those are all from the center of the slot. And then that's what I have left over at the end. So I can go ahead and put me a piece of scrap under there. And cut that off. I'm going to leave enough that I can put my rivet in there. And there's my bullet loops. So I'm going to put that down. I'm going to make sure, before I do that, I'm going to make sure they're pulled good and tight. I can always, I can always uh, trim those off after I put my rivets in. So I'm going to pull those real good and tight from each end. That makes sure that my bullets are in there good and tight. Double check them for tightness. And they are nice and tight. Then I can go ahead and take my eighth inch punch and punch through both thicknesses of my leather. That's going to be for my rivet. So take my rivet setter and I'm going to use 5 sixteenths rivets. I'll use two caps. Two rivets. And I'm going to go from the back side put my rivet through put my cap on and then use my setter do the same thing on the other side now remember I stretched that out good and tight before I punched my holes. So I knew that my loops were going to be good and tight around my bullets. Now I can come back and I can trim any of that excess of that loop material. Be very careful. You don't want to cut the black material. But you can see there it is on the back what it looks like with the rivets on there. But look at the front. Nice finished look on each end. These bullets are nice and snug. They're not going to fall out. But they'll push right out. And then since I've put my rivets in with my bullets in there, these are going to stay nice and formed and make it easy for me to push another bullet or another set in there. So now even if I take them all out,
my loops are going to stay formed in there. And then it makes it real simple to reload. And I can carry my five loads with me on my belt. So I could do two of those, carry one on each side, uh, or I could do if I if I wanted to, I could make one that held ten, so I can make it longer and uh, make this piece longer, make this loop material longer, and make one that holds ten rounds. It's up to you. However you want to do it. However custom you want to be, you can use different colors. I've done this with black and white, uh, black and black, brown on brown. So um, you can do it however you want. That's a quick way that I do these bullet holders. Now, if you were going to do it with shotgun shells, obviously you're not going to get as many because the shotgun shell is so much larger in diameter than the 38 special bullet. But you do it the exact same way. You just measure the width of your shotgun shell and then cut your slots and you just repeat the same steps. So the only thing that really is going to change is how many shells you can get in your bullet loops or how many loops you can get in the space for a larger bullet or shell and then uh, how long of a piece you need for your actual loops. So there's one way how I make these bullet loops. Now I make them several different ways just depending on uh, how a customer may, may want those or uh, another thing is how quickly that I make them. Um, sometimes I make them where I actually put the loop material through the same hole so I only make one slot and I put the material through go around the bullet and pull it back through the same hole so um, that way your bullets end up closer together or touching basically let me show you an example that I have here's one that I did this is for a Taurus Judge and then I put slots in here or loops on the side to hold the 410 shells and you can see I did that technique where I put the uh, loop material through the same hole coming up through the same hole around the shell and back through so it, it makes the shells or the bullets close closer together and it also will keep that loop from pulling through the other side. Now, if you did it like this and mounted that onto a belt, or in this case, onto the holster itself, that's not going to move. Now, these I have really good luck with because I'll put them on my belt and they won't pull through either. But I could physically take one of these bullets out and push that down but it's not gonna it's not gonna change the layout or geometry of that circle for that bullet because I've got it riveted down on both ends so that piece is never gonna change so that's just a different way of doing it um, it's quicker, um, at least in my opinion it's quicker, but just another way to do it. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you 
get a chance to do this for yourself or someone else. Um, it's not real time consuming and uh, it makes for a really nice looking uh, bullet holder. So try it out. See how it works for you. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Please, like I always say, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.